So what are these virtual threads all about? Well, it's a new notion added to the JDK in the concurrent programming field. The JEP tells us that virtual threads are lightweight threads that dramatically reduce the effort of writing, maintaining, and observing high-throughput applications. There are three goals in this JEP, so let us review them one by one. The first one is to enable server applications written in the simple thread-per-request style to scale with near-optimal hardware utilization. What is a thread-per-request style? Well, for an HTTP server, it means that each HTTP request is handled by its own thread. For a relational database server, it means that each SQL transaction is also handled by its own thread. If you have ever worked with a Java EE server, this is how it is working. One request equal to one transaction equal to one thread. So what is the cost of this model? Well, to understand this cost, you need to understand the cost of a thread in Java. Cost of a platform thread and CPU usage. A Java thread, as created in the very early versions of Java, is a thin wrapper on a platform thread, also called operating system thread. There are two things you need to know about them. First, a platform thread needs to store its call stack in memory. For that, 20 MB are reserved up front in memory. Second, it is a system resource. It takes about 1 milliseconds to launch a platform thread. So, 20 MB of memory, 1 milliseconds to launch. A platform thread is, in fact, a rather expensive resource. How can you optimize hardware utilization with such threads? Suppose you have 16 GB of memory available for your application. Divided by 20 MB for a thread, you have room for 800 threads on such a machine. Suppose these threads are doing some I.O., like accessing resources on a network. And suppose that this resource is accessed in 100 milliseconds. Preparing the request and processing the response will be done in the order of 10 nanoseconds. Suppose all this in-memory computations are taking 1,000 nanoseconds. It means that there is a factor in the order of 100,000 between the preparation of the request and the processing of the response, and the time it takes to get the response, during which your thread is sitting there, doing nothing. So if you have 800 such threads, your CPU will use at 0.8%, less than 1%. And if you double the memory to 32 GB, it will be used at 1.3%, which is still pretty low. If you want a CPU usage of 90%, then you need 90K such threads. Launching them will take 90 seconds, that is one minute and a half, and they will consume 1.8 terabytes of memory. So clearly, platform threads are far too expensive to scale with near-optimal hardware utilization. Another model of thread is needed there. This first goal is very ambitious. The second goal is to enable the existing code built on the classical Java threads to adopt virtual threads with minimal changes. This goal is also very ambitious because it means that everything you could do with classical threads, you should be able to do it in the same way with virtual threads. That covers several key points. First, virtual thread can run any Java code or any native code. Second, you do not need to learn any new concepts. Third, but you need to unlearn certain ideas. And here are some of them. First, virtual threads are cheap, about 1,000 times cheaper than classical platform threads. Second, Blocking a virtual thread is also cheap, so trying to avoid blocking a virtual thread is useless. Writing classical blocking code is okay, and that's a good news because blocking code is so much easier to write than asynchronous code. At this point, you may wonder, is it a good idea to pool virtual threads? Well, the answer is no, don't do that, you are just wasting your time. Two more good news with virtual threads. First, thread local variables also work in the same way. And second, synchronization also works. Now several things needs to be said about synchronization. A virtual thread is still running on top of a platform thread. There is still a platform thread underneath. The trick is this virtual thread can be detached from its platform thread so that this platform thread can run another virtual thread. When would it be detached? Well, a virtual thread can be detached from its platform thread as soon as it is blocking. It could be blocked on an I.O. operation, or on a synchronization operation, or it could be put to sleep. Now the thing is, for the moment, if a virtual thread is executing some code inside a synchronized block, it cannot be detached from its platform thread. So during the time it is running this synchronized block of code, it blocks a platform thread. If this time is short, that's okay, there is no need to panic, and nothing to do to prevent that. 
If this time is long, that is, if it's doing some long I.O. operation, then it's not a great situation. You may need to do something. You can prevent this situation from happening by simply replacing the call to synchronized with a re-entrant lock. This problem with synchronized blocks may be solved in the future, so in fact it may be solved by the time virtual threads become a final feature of the JDK. Now let's dive into the coding. Currently virtual threads feature is available with Java 19 and Java 20 as preview feature, and Java 21 intends to finalize it into upcoming release. Currently I am running this code into Java 21's early access build. Now first thing first, how to create virtual thread. Well for that, let's understand this example where we will create both platform and virtual threads. The thread.builder interface lets you create threads with common thread properties, such as the thread's name. The thread.builder.off platform subinterface lets you create platform thread. While thread.builder.of virtual lets you create virtual thread. I'm just adding the join methods to wait for both threads to terminate. So this will print the message before our main thread gets terminated. When we run this code, we will get output like this, where for platform thread, it's printed the thread class, and for virtual thread, it's virtual thread class. That's it, and this is how we can create the virtual thread. Virtual threads are working on the top of platform thread. You may be thinking, there is no performance gain just overhead. So what's the deal? There's more about virtual thread. Let me show you. Let me show you how this code is running. I am creating 10 virtual unstarted thread with stream pattern. And the task these threads are running is just print the current thread. Then I put them to sleep for 10 milliseconds and then print the name of the thread again. And at the end, I just start these unstarted threads and call join method to make sure everything will be seen on the console. So let me run this code and you see that something really unexpected is happening here. The same virtual thread is running first on top of the thread one of this fork join pool, and then, when it comes back from sleeping, it is running on top of the thread 7 of this fork join pool. So in fact, it could jump from one platform thread to the other. If you do this on your own machine, make sure that you are launching enough virtual threads, because you will probably not observe that with only one or two threads. So how is it working under the hood? In fact, when the virtual thread is blocked due to some operations, the corresponding stack is moved from the platform thread it is running on to the heap memory. So now this platform thread is free to run another virtual thread. When this task gets the signal that it can continue running, then its stack is moved back from the heap to a platform thread, but not necessarily the same. So this is the price of blocking a virtual thread, moving the stack of this virtual thread to the main memory and back. Blocking a virtual thread is not free. Nothing is ever free, we all know that but it is much, much cheaper than blocking a platform thread. The nice thing is, all the blocking operations of the JDK have been refactored to leverage that. That includes the I.O. operations, synchronization, and thread.sleep. How many platform threads do you need to run your virtual threads? Well, we can test that. Let me create virtual threads and gather all the corresponding platform thread names. This code is basically launching five virtual threads and then it extracts the pool name and the platform thread name using some code. And then, at the end, it just prints the different statistics. The time it takes to run this code, the number of cores I have on my CPU, the number of thread pools, and the number of platform threads. So let me run this code. For five virtual threads, it uses three platform threads and took two milliseconds. Let me use ten virtual threads and run the code again. For 10 threads is still using three platform threads and took four milliseconds. Let me use 100 virtual threads and run code again. Now it's using seven platform threads. Let's see what happens for 1000 virtual threads. It's still using seven platform threads. Let me increase virtual threads to 10,000. Still using seven platform threads. Looks like we have a pattern here. What about 100,000 virtual threads?
Now it's using eight platform threads and took 156 milliseconds. And by the way, even if these threads are not doing much, just some string operations and adding elements in a concurrent set, you can see that it takes only 156 milliseconds to run all these threads. Now let me go up to 1 million threads. It took less than one second and still using eight platform threads. What about we try to launch 10 million virtual threads? Have you ever tried to do that? Launching 10 million platform threads on your machine? Well, usually it's not possible, but with virtual threads, we may be able to do it. Let me do that in real time. You may be thinking that I'm cheating, that this is not real time, but it is real time. Really, launching 10 million threads with Loom on this old laptop that is also capturing this screen to make this video takes a little less than 7 seconds. This is just amazing. This is what Project Loom is doing. And this is all about the virtual threads in Java. And remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and share it with your friends who need to know about this feature of Java. Also, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to get more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy coding!